Thanks for joining me. This is Danny and welcome back to my real tech series. Today we are going to be setting up a auto crafting system to craft deluxe nachos because they're delicious and they're kind of OP. So let's get started. We are going to be setting up an array of assemblers from immersive engineering in order to do a bunch of crafting for us in this room. And they are pretty much going to fill up this room because we're going to be setting up three of them. And we're also going to be setting up a furnace over here with a, an external heater and we're going to be using logistics um, from Pneumaticraft in order to move all of the items around. Um, we're going to be needing the first two rows in this chest, all these things in order to do this. Um, so we're going to get started by putting together these putting together these assembler machines. Of course, these are multi-block structures from the immersive engineering mod. So they require lots and lots of blocks. Um, now, since we have immersive petroleum, we can use the projector in order to um, know where to place the blocks. So I'm going to set up the first assembler right there. And we're actually going to have just enough room in here so that we can have one block going of area where we can walk around the assemblers and the three of them are going to be right next to each other. Um, actually, I would need to turn that because the conveyor belts are go Oops. The conveyor belts are going to be in the front and back so that we can access them. So that's where we're going to put the first one. Um, and actually, I'm just going to assemble all three of them right away. So we want to hit this guy on the input with the hammer. So we got green there, that's input. We can see the conveyor belts going in. And there's number two. And there's number three. Hooray! Let's get that out of there. <clears throat> so uh, we can see that the input is on this side. So this is basically where we put stuff in. You could set a conveyor belt here pointing into that conveyor belt. And what and whatever is on that conveyor belt will end up going inside this inventory. Um, if we put a conveyor belt on this side, facing out, it's going to pull anything that ends up as the result of a crafting recipe. Um, we power it up on the top, so we're going to want some wire connectors up there. Um, this is redstone. Actually, both sides have a redstone switch where we can turn it on and off. For this particular build, we're not going to need that. Um, it'll just turn off when it fills itself up, which is what we want it to do. And we can also pipe in fluids in the back here, which we are going to need to do with two of them because we're going to need milk in two of them. All right. Can I reach that one? Yay, I can. Okay. And I'm running medium voltage in this factory, so I'm using... Medium voltage wires. Um, we're probably going to need another relay. Did I have some in here? No. So I'll put, let's see. Probably going to need one right there, I'm thinking. And then to there, there, and whoops. There. All right. So they're all powered. Cool. So we're not going to be using conveyor belts on this. We are going to be using logistics in order to insert into the back and pull from the front when needed, which is one of the reasons we're not going to have to turn it on and off because it's only going to craft um, stuff when it actually can. Uh, this right here is a drawer controller for our little food store downstairs. <laughs> We're going to be putting the output into that eventually. But so to set these things up to do crafting for us, um, this is basically what we're going to do. So let's say this one is going to be our nachos. Um, we can basically, well, we can drag ingredients in here from JEI like that if we want to set up the crafting recipe ourselves. Or we can hit the R key in JEI to get this plus, and that's going to fill it in for us. And we could actually do multiple recipes like that. Like, let's say we wanted to do nachos also. Um, we would do the same thing, and then that would fill in the next one, the next empty one. 
So what we're going to need to do for this particular recipe is we have seven different recipes that we need to do. Um, the deluxe nachos themselves, the tortilla chips, um, the tortilla, <laughs> and the cornmeal. That's actually the tortilla chips are going to be in their own assembler because that's three recipes right there. We're going to have cheese, um, which is what requires the milk. We're also going to have cream, heavy cream, which also requires milk in a mixing bowl. I have all the recipes set up in here. I'll show you the way I configured it. It's a little, there's going to be some back and forth going on between the assemblers. Um, but this is our final product. We have the deluxe nachos. And two of the ingredients for the deluxe nachos are being crafted in here. The heavy cream and the salsa. And these are all basically made with raw ingredients. And they all have the common mixing bowl. The assemblers are capable of creating recipes that feed into the next recipe. And the way it works is that it's just going to store the result in this slot. If we were to put a conveyor belt on here to pull what's in there, it would actually only give us the final product. It would only give us deluxe nachos. It will not output the heavy cream or the salsa. And that's exactly what we would want because we want the salsa and heavy cream to be used to craft the deluxe nachos. So that's that one. We're actually making salt in this one, which is just water and a pot. And then we're making two things that require salt so that we don't have to go back and forth with those. Um, one of them is cheese, which requires milk and salt. And the other is the tortilla chips, which require tortilla um, and the salt and lime. Uh, the tortilla is being made in here, along with the cornmeal that, we're, that we need for the tortilla. Now we just need to get the ingredients in there. Um, one of the things that's really nice about the assemblers is that liquid ingredients can be pulled from a tank. These things have three tanks in them. So in this tank, we're going to have, I mean, in this assembler, we're going to have one tank that's full of milk. And this one will have one that's full of milk and one that's full of water. And this one, we're also going to have water. So what I've got back here is a cow in a jar from Cooking for Blockheads. And I'm just going to pipe stuff out of there. I'm actually using pipes from the Ultimate Car Mod just because they're a little bit more compact than the um, immersive engineering ones, uh, especially because of the pump. They're also a little bit cheaper, um, but we can pipe that into both of these. And now if we look in here, we should see that we've got milk and it's slowly filling that up and then it's going to fill this one up. And then we're also going to want water <clears throat> and these two over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, actually, let's get rid of that pipe. I'm just going to put the water generator there. And that's going to fill this one of these tanks up with water. And then we can extract from this. And then what's going to end up happening is both of those two are going to get filled with water, which is totally fine um, because we have an extra tank in that other one. So if it fills up with water, it's no big deal. Um, so all three of these now should have water in them as well. So we don't have to have a bucket in here or anything. It's just going to craft directly with the water and milk that's here. And basically, in this case, that means we're going to have pretty much infinite salt. Um, and as for the reusable ingredients, like the mixing bowl and such, um, I actually have to, do I have those in here? Here we go. Um, it will reuse those, so we just need to put one in each, in each assembler. We need the mixing bowl and the pot. So in here, we just need one mixing bowl, and that is going to cover all three of those recipes. And you can see it's already making heavy cream because it has milk and it has a mixing bowl. <laughs> Hooray! And it's going to stay in that slot, so it'll make a stack of it. So we'll just always have a stack that's in here ready ready to be pulled from. Um, here, we're gonna put a pot in here, which means that right away we're gonna get cheese and salt. So we have an infinite water supply, so we're basically just always gonna have infinite salt <laughs> for the most part. And over here, we just need the mortar and pestle for that, and then we need a skillet. And that's it, so now we just gotta get the ingredients in there. So to move the ingredients around, the, the items, um, we're going to be using logistics from the Pneumaticraft mod. So in the last episode, we already set up a little logist logistics network here with, in fact, if I hold my logistics configurator, you can see that we have all these cloches with these logistics provider frames that are giving us all of these items that we have in these drawers over here. 
Um, this drawer has a storage frame on it. Um, so provider frames will provide to storage frames and requester frames. Now I did another complete video in detail explaining the uh, logistics network, but we're just going to cover it briefly here since we're using it. But if you want more details, you can check out that video and I can put a link in the description below. Um, but this, because we have a storage frame on here, this logistics network will have access to all of these ingredients that are in these storage drawers, um, which is essentially all the raw ingredients that we need in order to craft this stuff. Um, our drone is, this is a logistics drone. He's the one that's going to be moving all the stuff around. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to put requester frames back here on all on all three of these inputs. And that's where you put it. You can't put the requester frame anywhere else. This is basically the inventory of the input inventory of the assembler is that particular block. Um, so I'm going to do the same thing there and there. And then we're going to use a logistics configurator to tell it what it needs. So in this case, we basically wanted to keep a stack of corn in here at all times. And that's it. <laughs> that's actually all we need because everything else is getting from the water and these things that we already have in here. So all we have to do is say, we right click on this and we're going to right click on that. The first time we do this, it's going to lag for a little while. And we're going to say corn right there. And then I hit escape and I'm going to hold down the shift key and it'll double this every time. So I'm going to say, keep a stack of corn in here. So eventually when that um, logistics guy gets around to it, oh, and he just did, <laughs> he's going to put a stack of corn in here, which it is then going to use to make these tortillas. And, and then the logistics guy will come back and give us more corn. Um, so eventually we'll have a full stack of cornmeal and tortillas in here. And then this one, what does it require? Lemon, or it requires limes and it requires tortillas. That's it. It's getting the milk from this tank, which is very, very slowly filling up. So it may take a while before we actually get output from this. Um, I might want to make another cow in a jar because they are pretty slow. So just lime and tortilla. And you can see it came up really fast that time. Oh boy. Um, how do I find the li <laughs> lime fruit? Oh man. It would be nice if I could pull pull it from my inventory. If, actually, I think I can. Let's do that instead. <clears throat> so right click with the logistics thing, and then we can go like that. And then we can shift right click and say we want a stack of limes in here at all times and a stack of tortillas. Now, currently our logistics network does not have access to tortillas yet. We haven't set that part of it up, um, so it's not going to do that yet. Um, and then here we need a lot of stuff. Um, here we're going to need tomatoes, onions, spice leaf, lime, garlic, uh, tortilla chips, cheese, cooked fish, chili pepper. If I forgot anything, we'll find out soon enough, I'm sure. <laughs> and in the time that it took me to set that stuff up, our logistics drone already brought all this stuff in here. I don't know why there's only three tomatoes. Maybe because he brought that while I was while I was still clicking the button. Um, so now what I'm going to do is on the front of these things, I'm going to put passive provider frames. So a passive provider frame is similar to the active provider frame, except that with the active provider frame, it will basically output its its stuff anywhere like it'll i'll put it into storage things it'll i'll put it into um, requesters whatever um the active or the passive provider frame will only output to things that are requesting things so if we put these on here the only way that these things are going to be pulled from is if somebody else is requesting them and of course they are because <laughs> remember we are pulling the tortilla chips or the tortillas out of here and we're putting them in here. So now these tortillas are in here. So it should be able to start making tortilla chips, except that it needs a cutting board. So we forgot that. So this guy needed a cutting board. I'm actually going to put that there. And now it's making nachos or tortilla chips. So it should pull those tortilla chips out and put them in here. Um, the only thing that we have left is actually, we're not doing a turkey leg there. We're doing cooked fish. You can do why are there two different cook? Oh, that's weird. So we're going to do cooked fish <laughs> and that's still going to give us nachos. So you can swap out the ingredients that way. You can grab things from JEI and throw it in there. 
Um, and over here is where we're going to do the cooked fish. So I've got a furnace with a external heater on it. Um, and to get these external heaters to work, you do need to give them power. And the external heater from Immersive Engineering, of course, will basically power the furnace so that you don't have to put coal in it. Um, I did have to hit it with a wrench a few times to get the the power input thing to the top of it. So that should be getting power and it's powering the furnace and the furnace is cooking the raw fish now. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to put a requester frame on the furnace and this we actually because this is a Minecraft furnace um, it is sided so it does require that we put the stuff in the top so we're saying the upper side and we'll see that the little frame thing went to the top also and we're just going to request fish same thing we're going to say 64 fish um, and it's going to pull them from there actually the fish we're getting from our mine colonists so that actually wasn't part of our little setup that we did last time um, so now that it's the reason I have a hopper down here is because we can't have a frame on here that can both give us fish on the top and pull out the cooked fish from the bottom. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a actually an active provide wait no a passive provider frame on the bottom here in on this hopper so that way it'll be able to pull the the cooked fish out of the hopper if somebody else is requesting it which somebody is, and that would be this guy over here. So eventually we'll see fish in here. So I've decided to put another cow in a jar. I do need milk first in order to craft a milk jar. Here's the recipe for a cow in a jar, an anvil, air block, a cow, and a milk jar. Uh, what? Oh, I actually have no wood. Well. Alright, let's see if we can do this before it gets dark. Here's the milk jar. Um, put the milk jar down there. Okay, I made a lead to make this a little easier. Oh, oh go in there. Go in there. <laughs> Just a little bit easier. <laughs> there we go. Alright, so now that the cow's in there... There's an air block, the cow, and the jar. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> and we do get the anvil back. And now we have a cow in the jar. Hooray, we got our first deluxe nachos. Nice. In the requester frames, you can set a minimum order size. So I set the minimum to 16 on this one and 32 on all the other ones so that the drone wasn't going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth every single time it was doing something um, because then it kind of tends to fall behind. So you can see all of our ingredients aren't maxed out at 64, but as soon as they get down um, 16 below what they're supposed to be, then it's the drone will bring over 16 or more at a time. Down below the factory, we have our little food store. <laughs> and I'm going to put these deluxe nachos right there and this is a drawer controller that um, we can access from upstairs and I'm going to put a requester frame on it and we are going to request of course actually we can just grab one of these I'm going to request these and I'm, I guess I'm gonna have a keep like maybe two stacks in there so so we'll always have as soon as this thing catches up we'll always have two stacks of deluxe nachos in here and whenever I grab some it will grab some more from up there which will cause it to, to make more so just to kind of kickstart things a little bit <laughs> I filled up these tanks full of milk from a local cow and That should help get us some more stuff. 
Oh, it's all going into here. So it's all going into the heavy cream. Oh crap, and none of it's going into cheese. Oh no, no, it's going into cheese too. Nice. So pretty soon our drone should come over here and grab some cheese. Although it's very busy with those farms. There we go. Now <laughs> we're gonna get lots of nachos, hooray! And once we have, actually I didn't set a minimum on that, on that so at any point, the drone's going to grab some nachos and then put them. Yeah, unfortunately, the storage frames don't have a setting on them that allows you to set a min minimum order. Only the requester frames do, so. So he's going to go back and forth over here, grabbing one item at a time sometimes. But eventually, he should end up coming over here. Oh, he's over here now. I think he just grabbed some cheese and he went back. So he's not grabbing the deluxe nachos. Um, okay. So he put the nachos in the drawer. Um, it doesn't seem to work. The requester frames don't seem to be working on the drawer controller. I'm not sure why, <laughs> but, but we got our deluxe nachos in here now, so I'll have to come up with some way to lay this out a little differently so that he can get access to the drawer down there, because obviously having a hole in the floor here isn't ideal. Although maybe if it was kind of off in the corner or something, that wouldn't be so bad. Like here. Maybe I could decorate it up somehow, I don't know. But I think he should be able to fly through that hole and then come over here. Yeah, that will probably work. Oh, And you might have noticed, I'm really freaking hungry. But guess what? I have deluxe nachos! <laughs> no matter how hungry you are, it's going to fill up all your hunger bars and look at all that saturation too. And it's going to give me three and a half points, although I do have to be careful because I don't want to get to 99% or higher in this pack or then, then I'll lose my buffs. But all that work is finally going to pay off and I get to eat this delicious... Mm. Gotta savor it. Mm. I've worked hard for these nachos. They're delicious. Mm. Look at that. <laughs> Yay! And now I'm up to 97% all the way across. Nice! I hope you enjoyed this. If you do have any questions about this build or anything else, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Or if you have any comments or ideas or whatever, feel free to put them in there. And of course, if you did enjoy this, don't forget to click the like button and join me next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.